Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So it's somewhere around 3.30, it is November 21st, Friday. Looks like 1.5 degrees Celsius. You guys can see the sun's kinda, kinda going behind the hill there. So my batteries are not charged. That one says 40, I don't know. But this one says, this one's been in the shade. 36 change, so I don't know. Given it's one and change Celsius, it's probably somewhere just above freezing. Call it 35 just for a number. Uh, hasn't been bad, not really windy, nice sunny day. What am I up to? I've been hopping the battery charger around. Um, so I charged these two up. Um, I charged up, I made sure that one was peaked. So this one's going tomorrow. I'll hit that bike and the uh, 250 SX by the door. So there's two, the two of the 250 SXs will get done. Um, I'm just kind of closing up for the day. Got to take a walk around the horde to show you guys everything I've been poking about with. Um, I kind of went roaming around the board and discovered I had another few tarps that have not been drafted into service yet, brand new. So I want to use what I have, especially tarps seem to have gone up a little bit in cost. Um, I'm debating on this building whether to bring it down to um, basically an 8x12, get the hoop off it take one hoop down I can use the hoop over there right so that's one thing that I've been thinking about which kind of slowed me down on this today um, if I do that it'll y you know and to be honest I'm even considering moving that building the only problem is I haven't thought about where yet so that's kind of slowing down that thing a little bit um, I did some cleanup today. I fired up the lawn mower and uh, cleaned up this area. So, yeah, my wife is going to be away for, I think tomorrow she's going to be gone for a while. So. I, uh, I figure I'll be able to sneak in there and get that project done. I also mowed down this mess, right? Make it a little easier to work on the building. And I had a bunch of brush from cleaning out the ditch. So I burned that up. I'll show you that in a second. This area here. I also cleaned up, right, and this is about where the lawnmower died, the recoil, I hit something and stalled it over there as I was cleaning up this mess, and then the recoil starter gave up, I probably hit those bricks and that metal, so, anyway, it actually did run pretty good. And now it's got stabilized gas in it, so that's not a bad thing. Over here, once again, the theme is cleaning up. I, um, oh god, my back is sore from uh, bending over with the brush. I, um, let's see if this will break off. Nice. There we go. Burns a lot better when you kind of get the logs next to each other over some nice hot coals like that. See that? Now we'll get her. This will continue burning up. Then I won't have little scraps to deal with in the morning. I also, um, 
there was quite a bit of stuff here so I kind of burned that up too and here behind the truck and all and even around here I have quite a bit of I mentioned it a few times but I have quite a bit of trouble with these uh, deer ticks well actually deer ticks but generally speaking mostly I see dog ticks um, those big guys you know after they bite you they kind of grow to be the size of a raisin and then you pull them off and they leave a real nasty welt um, and then you got to get checked for Lyme disease this uh, tree also fell in the car so I broke off a few of those pieces and burned them up got it off the car as you see as a matter of fact I found a couple of tarps in the car so I was glad um, while I was doing this burning the trailer kind of caught fire there so I had to squirt water on it to get that to go out yeah burning around objects like tractors and all that kind of doesn't go down under Harvey being smart but um, when you're trying to clean up you know yeah they got to shred it up with a lawnmower or, um, or or burn it up one or the other to get get rid of the material so obviously played with that for a while Then, over in the driveway, I really um, got to keep moving forward on this working space for the winter. And I took out the two snow blowers. I keep calling this a Jacobson. <coughs> Section and Aaron's <coughs> Cub Cadet String Trimmer. I need to uh, harvest the space. I don't know if I actually have a light that'll cast any light on it. Not really. Yeah, I need to um, um, set set this up much neater much cleaner much more user friendly um, and I'm thinking other than having a snowblower down here and to be honest with you I'd like to get the snowblower over there right if I actually get the snowblower here when I need it, I could drive it out either door. I think I'm also considering getting the um, quad, the 4x4 quad, in on this side. The When you're playing with cleaning up a um, horde, like I have, you kind of try to uh, figure out what fits best, what you're using regularly, you know, how you're going to set things up so they're not in the way. This thing here, given that it's not an easy start and runner, as a matter of fact, I pulled the carb off it again, um, is a pest. This thing is a big pain in the neck. Um, it's causing me grief right here. It's a big obstacle right in the middle of everything. If it started up easy, right, and drove right out, it would be a great thing, but that's not its plan, it appears. Um, so I need to get this thing so she either starts easy and gets out, or it needs to get jacked up and put it in an outside building. It just takes up way too too much space. It's too heavy. If there's snow on the ground, right, pushing it, you know, up and down this hill, little hill here is going to be a big pest. I don't want to be doing that. I want it. I don't want it running and behaving. 
or it could hang out outside and when I'm in the mood to play with it when it's warm I'll play with it when it's warm out so um, it's annoying me though it's just not it's not cooperating I'll show you guys the carburetor up close and personal I was gonna put it in some uh, carb dip tonight but I can't seem to find the carb dip one of the reasons why I'm roaming about found tarps found all kinds of other stuff couldn't find carb dip here's um here's the carb that's on it it's a Keevan um, I'm not sure about that spacing there I don't know if this does metric No, nope, doesn't do metric. Um, those holds. Eye to eye, I don't know, two and a quarter inches apart. I'm uh, trying the layout. This is the gasket that goes there. I'm playing with the layout and so forth. And the uh, the problem is that it looks like these bolts, when I turn it sideways so I can bolt this thing on properly, looks like these bolts are going to interfere with it. So that was plan A is getting this carburetor functioning properly and it's fighting me. Plan B is to put one of these carburetors on it. and it's fighting me plan C it's always good to have a plan C right is to come up with um, and I don't know if I have any loose floating around here if you look at the carburetor that goes on a 250 X a 250 SX a 250 ES it's got kind of a um, flange that bolts onto the engine and then you um, the carburetor goes into uh, ready for this uh, a rubber hole a hole um, with a gasket and then you kind of tighten the uh, um, a clamp around the um, the rubber gasket and the rubber mold let's go with it that way to hold things in place as a matter of fact this this engine has one on it um, I just ordered one of these things the metal block it was like 20 bucks hopefully it's here soon and then I think I might be able to just stab this carburetor right onto it it's also a bigger carburetor it's made for um, um, 250 to 350 cc's so I'm figuring it would probably be a real nice carb to put on on the um, Cushman what I do is I borrow the carb off of this thing this is just a clone right I'll borrow this carb back again I'll stab it on there if it works good then what I'll do is I'll probably buy another one those are a little more expensive those are like $90 quad uh, uh, $90 carburetors um, yeah I'm just wrapping it up for the day so, as I'm talking to you, I'm also kind of laying out my day for tomorrow, trying to become a little more efficient. This is a um, eBay rear end. It was um, cost me 25 bucks, which was good. These things. The um, plates on the ends are worth 25 bucks. Sprocket's a halfway decent shape. Uh, the rear end itself, when you see somebody had to cut the frame because they couldn't get this bolt to spin out, that's not a good thing. The brake drum's in good shape. Um, so basically, I bought it as a parts rear end, so it was 25 bucks, and it was reasonable to get it shipped. I think the the whole deal. It was 28 bucks to get it shipped, 38, 40. I don't know. 
it was it was cheap enough where I took a chance and I figured I'd basically um, pay parts price for it and see if it worked out and it looks like I'm gonna get enough off of it to make it worthwhile from a parts point of view the axle itself is in good shape um, and if I go through the trouble of uh, of taking it apart, tack welding this on, backing that bolt out or cutting that bolt off and welding a bolt in, quite honestly the whole thing would be good. Um, I just don't need it that badly, so I didn't. So anyway, I told you the carb story, the rear end story, all the other trivia I've been up to. So we're about to the point we'll be wrapping up this video. Folks, thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, live love and have a great time. And don't forget to enjoy all your days. You only get so many, right? You don't get a minute more. So make sure you enjoy your days. Take care now, folks.